started off in Brixton with temporary installations that worked with a few local schools and we kind of built for pavilions for the Brixton Design Trail. And then since then, we've started to work um, a bit more across the city and also elsewhere in Europe as well, doing ranging from you know artist installations in galleries to to workshops with different um, people from different communities and and some now we're getting more into this kind of stakeholder engagement and um, architecture type world of things as well so that, that's kind of us I don't know if I've missed anything there Kim. Great okay um Shay. Okay um I um studied architecture um I completed my postgraduate diploma back in 2011. Um, shortly after that I started working with um, one of my former classmates, um, Stephen, um, and he was actually based in Clapham. Um, and we started doing some, uh, I met Benki, Benki through um, the Brixton Design Trail. Um, I am currently working with contractors on kind of um, uh, multi-unit developments um, and the Brixton Design Trail project was quite good because it allowed me to um, be involved in the community and again we kind of just put together um, a small installation and um, but now I'm doing more kind of corporate stuff where I'm just like commercial stuff so um, it, it, I for developers and clients. Yeah, so obviously I, I, I come from an architectural background. Um, working, I, I was working with um, in architectural practice, um, and in around 2016, I started working with my colleague Stephen, and he was actually based in Brixton, and I was working out of Brixton at that point, um, uh, and I met Binky through Brixton Design Trail, and we. Uh, Designed and built a small installation, um, and now I'm working in Cambridge with um, uh, a contractor. Actually, working with our contractor, um, and also working on some developments. Okay, thank you, Neil, the man that needs no introduction because you know everybody <laughs> in the room, <laughs> apart from anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> um, basically, yeah, I know everybody in the room, whether I've talked there, sons or daughters have been around me, through me, with me. And uh, Akil has, was part of my first debating session. So, and he was fantastic at the Royal College of Art uh, back, in, back about two or three years ago. Uh, Shay, I know him, we, we sit on the same Let's Build panel and uh, I got connected to you and then I found out that your son goes to Graveney. So yeah, 360 you with everybody. <laughs> small, small, small worlds. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I, I'm not an architect. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do is I infuse, I infuse young people and I've set up an alumni group from Graveney and they've spread far and wide. Thank and, you. And uh, yeah, there is there is more to come. Charlie Waterhouse. Um, Who are you? Why are you here? Well, <laughs> if I knew the answer to that question all the time. And um, so yeah, I work with Binky, who's who's next to me there on my screen. Could be somewhere different on yours. Um, um, as part of the Brixton project, you um, you may know us as the Brixton Design Trail in a previous incarnation. Um, and yeah, in a, in, in a parallel pre-corona universe, we hang out in International House in Brixton on the community floor. Um, and we've, how long, we, we've kind of done things with each other for, for, for years, haven't we? Sort of, yeah, it's about, it's about, we, we include the Brixton Pound yeah. as well, which we, um, we, we do work on together. Then it's about kind of 10, 11 years, yeah, so it's yeah. a while. It's a while. So I'll let you introduce what this is all about. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, well, your, your mistress of ceremonies. <laughs> we have obviously, you know, Brixton is covered with ongoing developments, um, some of which are more controversial than others. But the thing that kind of 
connects them all in 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 my mind is this this roller coaster that we seem to be on where you know development is um driven by the money that it creates for developers private companies and also for councils um and there seems to be an ever increasing trend to pilot high create small rabbit hutch like spaces um that seem to work against the very notion of that people will be living in them and working in them and moving around them they seem to be being created for kind of non-people you know if you look at the the average cad design uh, on a proposal these days they you know the, the people are getting weirder and weirder i mean you know it i think it's um it's evident that not all people can now be seen to be white on on cad designs but they will be kind of becoming mutated and they don't look like real people anyway my point is who and how are we building for real people real communities that um, involve lots of different cultures and um, lots of different ways of living this seems not to be happening um, and yeah we, we, we'd like to discuss today how we can begin to build a vision that takes us beyond the passive acceptance of regeneration um, and we take communities with us so that they are involved in the process of regeneration and regeneration is not a thing that happens to people but with them so that's that's kind of the the overview of what we want to talk about today um it's right now it's kind of a bit of an interesting time in in brixton for developers obviously we just had a you we just had the the recent um campaign to save nor um which has involved several different uh, celebrity, celebrity um, encouragements to save Nor, um, but is is this the only way? Is this is this the only way or the only place that we kind of get involved as a community? How can we sort of see ourselves in the overall process of the design of place? So I wanted to start with Neil, educator, campaigner, and activist. Um, for the inclusion of people from non-traditional communities in design and architecture. Would you, would you like to kind of kick off an initial response to that, Neil? Right. Um, thank you for inviting me, first of all, should I say. Um, well, there is a massive place for us. I mean, it, all we need to do is look at that article that came out um, the other day in The Guardian where David wrote about how the scandal that's going on in Southwark, uh, where 40% um, of the population are from, say, uh, non-traditional, because I, I hate to use the word, the stereotypical words that have been uh, put loads of people together, that word bane, uh, background. So I call it non-traditional, and I'll just quickly explain that. Non-traditional and traditional, because in the, in, in the wider schemes of things, Yes, we're all different colours, but when people see us, they just see us as one colour. And they don't, and we could be coming from a non traditional background, e.g., our parents haven't, are not um, architect, engineers, etc., etc., of that professional field. And we get into it, so we're non traditional. And we are people of colour who have traditional backgrounds where our parents are in that field but are still not seen as part of that field because of the colour that we are. So that's where I use the word non-traditional and traditional. And then it encompasses everybody who is from that sort of background, don't matter what colour you are. And my main sort of thrust is we should be designing because we're about what's, if we're talking about people of colour, or Caribbean or African extraction, we're what, 17% of the population. But we don't have a say in what, what, our, what our inner city areas look like. We have people that come in from the Shire counties who have got the, well, they've gained the qualifications, just academic qualifications, but they haven't got life qualifications. And then they think that they can design for life 
which there's no connectivity to that, uh, if I'm making myself clear. Um, so what happens is we're under this sort of, we've put a hierarchy that academically you could have X, Y, Z, but you have influence over the majority. But if you have life experience, you don't have any sort of say over what the academic input into how you're living. So I'll bring that down to a bit closer to home. I come from a council estate and I go around loads of council estates and they're good council estates and they're not so good council estates, but they've been designed by academics who never, ever, ever, ever have lived in a council flat or social housing. But yet still, you see on the adverts by people who don't necessarily live in council or social housing, these big double fronted uh, refrigerators that can't actually get through the, the little opening in the doorway, let alone get up the stairs or get in the lift. Yes. And suddenly yeah. they've been sold to everybody. Same yeah. thing with the sofas. The sofas are massive sofas, you know, double fronted, this, 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 you know. And you can't actually, and a fine example is if you go by Columbia Market down Columbia Road, they've got these uh, doors which are set back uh, in the opening and they're transversal, so they're facing a brick wall. And you think to yourself, who in God's name would ever design something mm. if they'd live in it to face a brick wall so that when you try and put different size objects, you've got the battle of turning it around and then turning it another 90 degrees, lifting it up, lifting it down to get through. Yeah. So my main aim is to, to get young people who live in the city to design the city, to have a say of what it looks like be it Brixton, be it Clapham, be it X, Y, Z, not have people, not have the 32 boroughs being designed by people who've got, number one, no emotional contact with them, except they come in, have their kids, and then when they want a better, well, when they want to change their life, they go back to the Shire counties. And number two, they come into the inner city areas, and I'm specifically talking about inner city areas now. Uh, they come into the inner city areas, have a fantastic time, then move out, and then they yeah. come into the inner city areas, design for the inner city areas, still no connectivity, and still move out. Yeah. And the ones who do stay, funny enough, they get uh, inherited money to get a nice big house in Dulwich, uh, look at transforming areas, which has got good housing stock, Victorian and Georgian housing stock like Brixton, because mm. Brixton, 10 years ago, was cheaper than Clapham. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. But the housing stock in Brixton was built with, they saw that that was built for them. They had these massive rooms, big front doors, massive front back gardens. And the only thing that annoyed them was it had a couple of social housing estates splattered around the area. And, yeah. But they could handle that because they could drive in and out. So they started with these okay. words, and it's, and it's all about words, how they indoctrinate people, gentrification. So it means the people who were there before weren't necessarily gentle people or yeah. et cetera. So my aim yeah, is, that's... or my, my main aim is to, to engage people who, from us, from non-traditional tradition, but design and, and, and have a say of how their environment, living, working, social environment is, is built and lived and worked in. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, that's a, that's a mission and a manifesto and it really sets us up well for this conversation. So thank you very much. I, um, I wanted to turn to Shay uh, next, actually, in kind of a, a bit of a response to that, because I understand from your um, education, your, your design education, Shay, that it, that's probably been relatively trans, um, what's the word, um, traditional. Um, so um, I'm just thinking about, you know, as a, as a young black architect and you're now working, as you say, in a kind of, you know, quite corporate environment, does your black perspective get a look in? Is anybody interested in your black perspective or are you still kind of delivering into a traditional um, set of this is the way it's done and 
you know it's enough yeah. because we've employed you as a black architect yeah and i think that's the, and that is the case um i am part of a kind of i'm a, I'm a, I'm a cog in a kind of in, in, the, in the big machine um i suppose over time um you make so you get the confidence to start kind of interjecting your own um opinion or your how you feel things should be addressed and um, i suppose i'm still at that stage but i i speak to people who are seasoned um and they still sometimes don't have a say in in, 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 a, in a bigger organization yeah um and and i suppose that's what's really got to change um uh, i suppose when i have opportunities to work on a smaller project i do have that say um yeah when i'm working in a kind of a big organization and like imagine it's it's the same if i even i funny enough i actually work with developers and contractors now so i work directly with um some of the major stakeholders yeah um, i figure i'd have less say if i was working in architecture practice yes um, okay so i i feel like I, I am kind of progressing um but still it, it would still take a quite a while for me to have um, a strong enough voice um, to start kind of saying this is what I this is the way I feel things should be yeah and to and to be listened to um, okay at the moment um, but so but to be honest with you I'm encouraged and it might be just my own personal kind of not con my lack of confidence to to kind of go okay this is how I feel things should be um, mm. there's still there's still that kind of but again I suppose if I had the opportunity to engage with communities I could be I could then be the voice for the community okay uh, um, so Seth and Akil I think this is a good moment for you to both enter in because um, I take it you've set up Resolve um, from a slightly different perspective i mean you're, you're you're pulling together lots of different disciplines but you seem to be doing it from the perspective that the social challenge or the social need leads um rather than the traditional kind of like hey there's a space let's design something and stick it in it and see who you know see who we can get to use it it seems like you're you're looking at the social challenge first is that is that kind of have I got that right? Yeah, I, I think I think so. Like, um, I guess it's probably it's probably worth mentioning. So I, I also part time work for Lambeth Council, so I've I've got kind of that experience and that kind of hat that I always take with me. And Akil has previously worked in in Croydon Council as well. And I think you know we the way that we try and come at things with Resolve is, as you said, is putting community first in in the way that we approach different projects, in the way that we approach different um, opportunities and, and challenges. And I think that that actually initially sprouted from just a want to do things a little bit differently. It's not that we've got this kind of um, really detailed manifesto that sets out how we want the city to change and how we think people should be behaving within spaces and how people should be acting when they approach certain things. Well, actually, the way that we started was that we, as as, in, as a group of young black um, practitioners or even students at the time, wanted an opportunity to do things a bit differently. Yeah. Um, and and in order to do that, we needed space, and that was kind of that was about it. Really, we just needed yeah. a bit of space. And and then the way that we've practiced has always re has just sprouted from that. Mm. Um, and and naturally, what you'll find is that people who, and this is what one of the things we try and explain is that people who do it's not just about the the look of someone it's about um the inclination for people to do things a little bit differently mm. um, and with that as you encourage more of that you'll start to encourage um an approach to the built environment that's 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 changing um you'll you'll start to yeah you'll start to kind of bring in um people from even when you, even when we say non-traditional it might um that might stem outside of architecture design engineering your, your professions and it might start to think about what other people who experience this city in all of these different and um, extraordinary ways, what they can actually bring to the process as well. Yeah. And um, I think that's how we've transitioned into this kind of design slash engagement world. Do, do you 
do you feel um, and this is just i'm just kind of chucking this out there to anybody who wants to respond to it that the the name architecture the label architecture is carrying carries so much which is about tradition and it's about um heritage and it's about history and it's it's about all of these things that seem to be quite past in lots of ways um and actually what you're all talking about to me is this is about how you know it's about how people live or it's about how people work um, or it's about how people spend their their leisure time and what kind of spaces they need in order to to do that i mean you know i, I probably have a quite a, a limited um perception of that word but um it, it feels that there is a um there's a there's a space to be filled by bringing together lots of different disciplines and lots of different voices that are kind of focused on the experience of life does that resonate yeah i was hoping akil was going to say something yeah no I'll, I'll go i just don't want to jump in yeah i, I think i think that's one of the things about architecture just for me i think we have to be careful about attributing too much to the term as a term because yeah. it can be replaced by anything which will then become another term which is loaded and people don't like, you know, urban design might well become one of those. Master plan has become that. People don't like the idea of master planning. Um, it, it's a term that's become really loaded when, you, when if you're talking to communities about it. So I think we have to be careful about how much we attribute to the term. I think one of the things that we really try and think of, and that's also because we focus on interdisciplinary, not with, we don't see ourselves as traditional art, uh, architects, we're not. Yeah. Um, is that we're interested in architecture of a set of ideas. And architecture of a set of ideas is limitless. It, it's limitless and it can be applied to everything and everyone. Um, architecture, the profession, as in guarded by the ROBA, ARB, et cetera, et cetera, part one, two, three, is, is null and void um, in many ways yeah. and, and needs to adapt. But in practice, as in like even people, it's like so professional architects in practice are, you know, like, are adapting us. I think it's taking much longer for institutions to realise that. And that's one of the things that's really easy to teach kids about why you could be interested in architecture because so many architects work so collaboratively with property developers, with structural engineers, with musicians, with whoever. Like it is interdisciplinary in the world of life because life is interdisciplinary. So I think it's, it's about communicating some of the realities of practice um, and, and, with, and then linking that with how it's learnt and also linking that with um disbanding the institution um okay. and so, so I, that's what i would say all right okay well you know that's 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 moving on from the manifesto we've then got some fairly weighty actions to, <laughs> to, to deal with we're going to get rid of reba are we um <laughs> we're gonna have to yeah. yeah okay cool um are you up for that charlie charlie yeah. um, in, <laughs> as, as well as being bricks and project um partner actually probably spends most of his time activating and, and activising. So, um, you know, getting rid of Reba is probably something that <laughs> you can add to your, your list of, of things to do. Well, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's really key, isn't it? I mean, that, that, that kind of, um, you know, if we, can, if we accept that the, those sort of previous hierarchies aren't fit for purpose anymore, then somehow we've got to work out how how our built environment is able to kind of cope with with the pressures it's going to face whether that's whether that's environmental pressures whether it's um, more immediate kind of societal pressures and i think it's really fascinating and i think we that's something that in the brixton project in in our own backyard we're really conscious of mm. in um you know just in, in our immediate environs there's a, there's a whole project around what to do with the wreck what to do with brixton station road what you know what how the, the immediate kind of environment develops. So it is really, really fascinating. Um, I've been doing a bit of, um, I was going to, it's a bit grand to say work with, more listening to um, uh, a bloke called David Graeber, who, who kind of is, is a professor at the LSE um, and, you know, kind of a, he, he gets sort of mis, misrepresented as the kind of, uh, as the sort of, anarchist a academic but he's really interested in how you can plan the built environment around care 
as the as the, the leading principle. So you know, the complete antithesis of the sort of tower blocks that we see, you know, descending in into into Brixton at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, that's a long-winded way of of saying for for people like Binky and I who have a kind of a, um, for want of a better word, a sort of a, a kind of an agitating role and in 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 Brixton that sort of touches that interdisciplinary thing. What what can we do? What's our role in this? So we've had the manifesto. We've had the uh, the action to to bring down Reba. What what part can we play in that? And how do we help you? Neil, I see Neil scribbling away there. Yeah, um, maybe I might throw a little bit of spanner in the works here because I don't think you need to, to get rid of Reba. I just think it needs to be reformed. And because these institutions, don't forget, um, they're sort of antiquated institutions where people have done what they've done because they've had the power for so long. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter about power. And what they need to, be, to, need to happen to them is they need to be brought into the 21st century. So as I, I was on a debate the other day with this quite right wing guy, and as I basically said, this, this, from now, there's two major turning points in history. Is one is Black Lives Matter, and the other is the covert uh, 19 situation. And Black Lives Matter is basically, it's, it's not only given power to uh, black people but it's given power to the people who felt that they didn't have a voice mm. the people who didn't feel that they were listened to the people the disenfranchised of whatever color race creed they were it's given them a whole uh, sort of uh, turbo boost so we can say and they 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 feel comfortable in asking these questions and the covert uh, situation has basically made us rethink how we're going to, like, for example, now we, we, we would have usually got together in an office, but how we, we connect with each other and how we're going to use the digitalization of everything to, in, to help us do certain things which we thought were that we had to do this way. Mm -hmm. So like that, Reba needs to actually rethink its whole uh, ideology and what it's based on is, and what it was based on is why male power so mm -hmm. if you extrapolate you take that white male power uh traditional power out of it and protectionism out of it then you could still have a body that could encompass everybody that could reflect all of society who's living it the diversity of a rich society so you don't necessarily have to you know throw the baby out with a well throw okay. the baby out with a bathwater sort okay. of thing so, so a, a, a question to, to all, you know, so how, how, how do we re-seed Reba? Well, I think um, uh, quite interesting because yeah, yeah, obviously Reba, um, they've talked about it being not fit for purpose for a long time because the training is so long um, before you get a title um, and the members don't really a lot of the members of Reba don't actually feel like it does enough for them. Mm. And, and that's people from traditional backgrounds. So I feel Reba as a kind of, as an entity needs to think about how it is going to be, to do better anyway. Uh, and obviously they are kind of addressing the diversity thing partly, but maybe not in a, in a kind of, um, in a comprehensive way, um, and yeah, Reba. Obviously, that obviously Reba, Reba has has own, own issues at the moment. Um, I think they're in the process of getting a new president. Um, but yeah, how do we how we address it? Is is is, is there, has to, there needs to be more lobbying. There needs to be more people who kind of have. Uh, 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 say on, on, on Reba as an institute. Um, uh, I, would, I, would, I would like to suggest that um, um, in, in, instead of getting rid of it, 
seems like a really difficult thing to do, that there, there is a move to set up something which is an alternative to it. Um, does any, is anybody aware of that, of that happening? Is that, is that kind of growing anywhere? Is there a call for that? I suppose uh, not that I'm aware of. There's nothing kind of alternative to Reba at the moment. Um, maybe yeah, it would, it, it, that would be something which would be, yeah, it would be quite, apart from the ARB, which are just kind of, just going to register qualified individuals. Um, but Reba seems to be have the, the, the most influence um, when it, so it's you know that that takes us back to the to the the power and the influence and um kind of the 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 tone of this conversation is to kind of um equalize and and depower and uh put that investment not upwards but kind of outwards in a kind of more flat uh way um so what we're what you as designers of spaces are looking at and working with and what you Neil are, are using as your campaigning and educating tools is something which is this is all about the diversity of, of voice and the diversity of the, the experiences behind the voices. Um, what Akil said earlier Neil just wanted to pick up on on that about beginning with children and and young people and the kind of education they get is uh, around design and and places is there a, is there an actual place that that fits in the curriculum that gives a sense of the broadness of of the topic um and one to a bit and one to a short sentence <laughs> no um yeah. What at the moment we're suffering from is, is social engineering in terms of education. We've got a government that's got predominantly of its, uh, as you all know, predominantly most of its people have been educated privately, gone to Eton, and they're social engineering it so that um, they've spent £20,000 a year or whatever on their education, £500,000 over a lifetime of their kids. The last thing they want are people from... Uh, uh, the state system to come along and start uh, taking these jobs. So what they've done is they've got this uh, program called Progress 8, which is basically eight subjects. The key subjects, maths, double English, triple science, uh, EBAC, science, uh, which is ge uh, humanity, geography, history, or a language. So that's in the, that was just before COVID. But now what they're doing is they have even condensed it more because they realise that in year... 10 now who are going into year 11 and year 12 who are going into year 13, that they're going to be on fairly disadvantaged because they've had six months out. So yeah. they're shrinking the curriculum even more mm -hmm. to get those young kids just to do the core subjects. And then the creative subjects, which are really important, the arts, the music, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, the technology, they become an add-on. So what yeah. happens is the private sector cleans up and takes that, all of that, okay. vac vacuums all of that space and produces people. But we are just in the process of finishing off uh, um, through one of my initiatives, Celebrating Architecture, um, mm. a whole program for primary school and secondary up to year nine uh, of how um, an architectural project to infuse young people to get into mm. architecture. Okay. So we, that, that is our input. And if it gets taken up in schools, then mm. yes, you'll have this time on the curriculum to do this. But to your answer, there isn't okay. that time. The creative time has been shrunk. But what you've just said is creative time has been shrunk, but look, we've come up with an answer. Yeah. And, and kind of here it is. So um, yeah. thinking that... Um, how that becomes available is is of interest to, to to us, and that may be something that we can discuss. In you know, because we that well, we're collaborating with we're collaborating with with Open City and putting yeah. it online, and it's totally it's going to be totally free. 
and I'm sharing it on my LinkedIn with all my teachers yeah. and everybody else. So they get an absolutely fantastic free package that's been, di been designed by a student architect, an architect and an educator. Okay, that, sound, that sounds amazing. Sounds really good. And, and something definitely that I'd like to hear more about. Um, Akhil and Seth, another, you are actually involved in another form of education. You know, community engagement is, is exactly that. It's a two-way education uh, as, as much as, you know, communities educate you in what it is that you want to do. And, you know, you can help them design the spaces that they want to live in. Um, what are your um, priorities around engagement? What, what do you, what do you ha I'll rephrase that. Firstly, how can we encourage more genuine um, forms of engagement and consultation? Because it seems to, beyond education, it seems that that is where it can sit, some of this activity. Do you want to go, Kirill? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be short and then you can chat, I mean, chat in as well. So I, I think that, that and we're in, I was on a call um, this morning with the GLA about a very similar thing. Uh, and I think that the problem with engagement itself, and I think what we're trying to do in our practice, even when we are working within engagement, is to move from community engagement to community resilience. So the idea is not to engage people on something that's already going on, and regardless of whether you are or aren't there, it'll go. The idea is to use whatever it, and, and that's, it's, it's also similar to um, my remarks about the RBA, but it's not a question of tomorrow we're going to bind the whole thing down. Tomorrow we're going to stop engaging. Tomorrow we're going to leave our engagement projects with Croydon, with Southwark, with wherever, with here, there, wherever. No. But actually, but, what we, but that move towards resilience building, what it does is it changes the kind of the, the wider nature of these of these um of these of these types of in, uh, activities and actually like perspective yeah it changes Absolutely. the perspective and so yeah. what we're doing with our current engagement projects yeah. is diverting as much energy finance away from purely um kind of deciding on what something looks like um to how can you use this that this kind of new pot of money as a community to organize how can you use this to build resilience within your own community so that next time you're making decisions? Yeah. So the next time that you're hi doing the hiring, you're setting the brief. And I think that that's something that's super doable. And, but what that does mean is that there aren't that many steps between now and there no longer being community engagement. Just in Absolutely. the same way that there, can be, that, that, that there won't be too many steps having done exactly what I think everyone here is talking about between there mm -hmm. being the RABA that is slightly changed and full of, amazing people who are doing amazing things yeah. and then a few steps toward it being like wait actually do we need an institution like this do the architecture do and do architects or do built environment professionals need a kind of safeguarding institution or do they need an infrastructure that's able to get people there because i think you are know, anyway i don't want to divert it back to the rba chat so but like that that's what we're trying to do with this yeah thing. no i mean that that's that's really interesting and it, it chimes a lot with at how we see ourselves in Brixton Project and, and, and the purpose and the role that we can, that we need to adopt moving forward. The, the other thing that's really important to me in what you've just said is, is the speed of the change because I, I feel very um, certain that we can spend no more time looking at what's gone wrong and actually we need to just, you know, old, old well-worn phrase, we need to actually just be the change now, which means that we do, we, we, adopt different behavior and we get on with it and we get on with it from you know five past four um or or, or whatever um so yeah that's great I, I, I again you know when you're ready i would like to see this as the beginning of the conversation that keeps moving it may at different times involve different different people and different groups but we very much like you to kind of you know see this as an open space to um reach out and do to do some of that resilience to see this as a tool of that resilience you know if it's a way of connecting with people or sharing that idea with a different group of people so they understand what's what's happening or what your intention is you know please everybody see it as a this is a space where you can um you can do that um so our our, our final question was what should we all be doing but i think you've answered it <laughs> 
um, if you were, each one of you was to make a call on this community, any, any community, any individual right now, what, what is it that you would want to say um, in um, as much as what is the activation you would want to put in somebody's head right now? Young, old, whatever colour they may be. He's going to kick off with that. I, I can go first. I, I think um, it kind of relates back to the point that we've been making a lot today, which is about, I think it's about representation and reform and kind of complete an upheaval or, or revolution to want of a better word i think that there is there's a need for both especially with what's happened with black lives matter and, and covid i think there's an, been there's an attention uh, private organizations public or, organizations or organizations across the world are drawing attention to the fact that there's a lack of representation within different institutions and that's that's great and we were on a call um, with a, a group called race and health and they made the point that even if you even if you change every single person in an institution, um, the foundations of that institution mm -hmm. can still be racist and therefore the practice yeah. will still be a racist practice. Exactly, yeah. And I think there's just, there's, there needs to be attention toward representation. Yeah. And there also needs to be attention towards kind of a different, a different method of doing things. Yeah. Because if we, if we try to, to kind of encourage different people to do the same thing, we're just going to get the same outcome. I think we need yeah. to be encouraging people, especially with, the kind of what we can only what I can only imagine is going to be a, a difficult time nationwide right mm -hmm. after this period and um, there is going to need to be a call for people to do things differently and, and to organize differently um, and to understand the way that we engage with our cities differently to understand the way that we engage with each other differently and I think that can be of, on multiple different scales and when Akil talks about community resilience and when he mentioned previously about what we try and champion it is also about doing things differently thinking of not thinking about the curriculum in the way that um neil has quite um quite um well explained that you know the curriculum isn't made for mm. for us right this curriculum was not designed for for kind of equity across different races and, and ethnicities so it's now now if any time is a time to start to think about different approaches to your own learning different approaches to your own practice you know and then one day you might be presented with an opportunity where you can put that to practice and, and like us it might be in an old abandoned shop where which no one cares about but you know it can it can come from 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 kind of hardships I think yeah no I mean that that makes that makes very good sense and you know I think certainly the impact of working in spaces you know that are just out there and abandoned in 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 communities whether it's in high streets or off high streets or on estates or wherever wherever it is the impact of that is is felt immediately it's implicit and it changes the it changes the view um shay have you got anything to to add there yeah um well i think obviously in, in my experience um the voice is very important so um any but uh, obviously any if there's somebody from let's say um a BAME background is, is them having the opportunity to have their voice heard. So, for example, in my organisation, um, uh, I suppose it should be encouraged um, for for people to, to, from traditional backgrounds to 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 have input at, at all stages, especially like I said in, in brief writing and um, uh, and obviously throughout the process of design and delivery. Um, and, and obviously have an opportunity to to obviously reflect on some of the things which are going on or, or things which are happening um, for example there's loads of um, initiatives now from BAME groups like um, the BFA, Black Film Architects, um, obviously Stephen Lawrence Trust and, and uh, maybe there's an opportunity for some of these these networks to now um, to, to coordinate with each other so yeah. any, if anything what she's developing and is it can now be brought forward should mm -hmm. should should be brought to the to the mainstream to to let people know that look people from the BAME group do have a voice and yeah please they should be heard. Um, yeah, I mean bringing bringing to just bringing together that the, the point that you're making about those existing 
groups that are there uh, supposedly to represent um, and they are in a position where actually they are representing the past, not the future. So they're not, they're not necessarily doing anything different. They are just as Seth has, uh, has, has just said, they're, they're, they're there, but actually they're still playing with the same system rather than creating a different system. So maybe there is something in, in calling out to, to those groups that have been set up in the name of representation, but actually they are already constrained from doing the job properly. Um, that's, that's just a thought. Um, we're kind of, yeah, we're nearly an hour in. So is, is there anything at this point that any of you would like to say as a kind of closing for this? Can I, can I say, yeah. um, in, in, in reference to your questions, I think that uh, the, at some point, pe some people have to just let go and trust. And basically, the kids, the young people that I'm trying to educate, I don't want them to be stereotyped just to be building around the environment. I want them to be building the infrastructures, yeah. the offices, the buildings. I want them to be deciding what... Uh, their country looks like so I don't want to be just channeled down this uh, avenue well you stay in this community and you just do this mm -hmm. and it's about engaging with, with in all aspects as Akil said and Seth has been saying and, and Shay has been saying in all aspects of, of, of society whether it's from the structural engineering to of and, and engineering of all different aspects to the, uh, to the development of how uh, are, are your communities led through different invet, uh, initiatives that you may be doing? And, and that is what uh, we, I think is, our, is my main aim, is to put enough feeders out there so they connect to each other and they realise that together, as Shay, as, uh, Shay was saying, together we could be stronger and grow and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and better. And to realise that, diversity, inclusion, it only makes things richer. It doesn't take away. Mm. And for the people who are in, in places of power position, to let them know that they're not going to be losing their jobs. They're only going to be enhancing their situation. And we're going to just gonna make a better, if we look at it from an aesthetic position, perspective, beautiful place for a harmonious sort of living. That's that's um, it's, it's a beautiful way to end. I don't know what else to say because, um, yeah, that, 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 that... Yeah. sorry, Shay. Sorry to add to that point again. Like I said, um, I feel, uh, especially people from obviously BM, say BM in groups, um, where they sometimes are living in substandard housing, um, that's not conducive to them having fulfilling lives. So, this, this is where. The opportunity where obviously people from the groups who are going to live in some of these for example i'm just using residential architecture for example who are going to live in there they, they need to have their voice heard because they, they need to ultimately live in spaces they want to live in yeah um it's, it's part of the conversation um or part of a part of a, um the case for having bma groups heard um in the design early process rather than than just being given something that they have to kind of put up with for the rest of yeah. their lives. Yeah, and I, I'll just, I just want to chime in very quickly as well, just to say, you know, also in that, in that step to making that immediate change, doing things like supporting Neil is like an, can immediately, like a, it's a tried and tested way of making that change. Okay. Because I think that speaking from, from um, experience, like I don't know any, I, I, I have never met one of Neil's students who is now an architect and I've met many of them um, who isn't doing things differently. And that's like a generational change, you know what I mean? Like I speak to Mark all the time. I speak to you know, in, in, in numerous amounts and we, and we find and see your students, even like Shay from, from um, DFDHA, like absolutely all the time. And they're all doing things very differently. So I think if there's any more proof that you need to find, get, like, you know, that we have ways of affecting education, that's, mm -hmm. that's that. It's now thinking, thinking about practice and professionalism that yeah. you know, need to be addressed as well. Okay, that's... Um... Can I just say one last yeah. thing? Yeah. Right, and, and this is an advert for Glam, right? And which I... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to get to that, but you that. carry on. Yeah. Oh, so, no, you introduced me on that then. <laughs> well, okay. Um, Neil, 
Um, following on from, from Akil's fantastic kind of lead in to what I'm about to ask you is, you know, you, you have therefore been seeding people and um, creativity into a variety of workspaces which are traditional, but you're seeding people who think differently. So glam, you mentioned briefly, was something that was kind of in play and beginning with this. So just yet, yeah, just, just please share with us what glam is, is here to do and how we can also help you and amplify it. Right. Um, thank you very much. Well, GLAM basically stands for, I had this, because the kids know I love fashion. They know I love Gucci. They know I love Louis Vuitton. And so my kids in school used to say to me, uh, so you've got Gucci on, you've got Louis on. And so I had the idea of mixing our textiles department and the architecture department mixing the two groups of kids going to do a workshop at um, Elliot Wood Structural Engineering Company to where he's going to have a day where they were going to fuse um, fashion and, and architecture together seven of each, seven who wanted to be fashion people and seven who wanted to be architects and have different mentors from different architectural practice to help them look at um, making wearable architecture so we reconfigured it and made it into a Zoom. And we had a day where we had people from all over the world, South Africa, uh, engineer, uh, France, Italy, Spain. We had different people from different places. It was supported by Central St. Martins, Kingston University, we had lectures. And it had people like, um, people like Annette from Let's Build There. So we had all of these different professionals there. And it, the day turned out, absolutely brilliant and then my mind started but mark was there as a tutor and so what we what we what i did my mind buzzed after that and now we're going global so the next one in november we're aiming for is glams going global and i've already making connections with uh, uh i've got central st martin's kingston oxford brooks and i'm getting connections in a university in south africa in France, and in, in, in Italy, and all over the world are making these connections to make sure that people from non-traditional background can see that you don't necessarily have to be an architect or fashion designer. You can lump these things together, the unusual together, and you can create creativity. So that is the whole idea. And it's to inspire people that you don't have to think just in one box you can be outside of the box and i'm sure and this is where i'm grabbing them now while they're in front of me looking at me staring into the screen a killing <laughs> seth and shay they're going to be my next tutors on glam goes glows go global so you'll be blown up globally guys how can we get involved how can we support well if the Brixton, your initiative, we can um, basically uh, get the Brixton initiative signed into the whole, buying yeah. into the whole project. I've got a major architectural practice who is tracking me down and basically wants to, to do work with me. But um, I'm talking money first because uh, one of the main things is, is you've got to understand is, you know, I'm getting loads of these different architectural yeah, practices absolutely. coming to me. Like what? I kills them, Sam. They come to me and they want to know how to engage with schools, engage with young kids, and they want me to help them. And I'm saying, all right, you're, you've got people in your, your diversity department and your architectural practice who's getting paid for doing it, but yet still you want me to help you. So we're putting a price on it. So it's called yes. Homegrown Plus. So Homegrown Plus is another initiative. So uh, Akil, I think, is Homegrown Plus because and Seth, and all of the people who get brought into me, they're homegrown. But you're the pluses because the, 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 <laughs> my babies are people like, well, not my babies, the big guys now, are people like Mark, Joseph, uh, and Shay, and all of these other people. They're all homegrown out of my sort of stable sort of thing. Yeah, but I love my pluses. Yeah, I, I love my pluses just as much as I love my homegrown guys. <laughs> well, that's great. And we will talk to you about that. Um, obviously, 
um, a couple of years ago on in in the town hall once uh, at some point where we um, learnt that uh, we at Brixton had been awarded creative enterprise zone status. Some very a very big sentence just sort of dribbled out of the leader's mouth, um, which was, "Oh, and Brixton's going to have a biennale." Um, so Brixton is going to have a biennale at some point in the future, and it seems like this is a, a this is a very good starting point also for that for the foundations of that conversation. The biennale again, um, Akil, it's just a word. So what this might look like as a series of uh, events, happenings, interactions, changes, um, you know, it's, it's, enti it's entirely open at the moment. Um, and it's something that, we, uh, you know, it would be great to talk to all of you um, about in its kind of founding stages, which, you know, given, given Fantastic. COVID, we talking about it, we've been me meaning to be talking about it for the last four months, but we haven't started yet. So we will start in earnest in the autumn. So um, if you're up for that, we'd love to have you on board. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, you definitely. This has, been, this has been amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes. There was, there was, there was a bit of talk earlier about getting rid of Reba that we thought we might have to just reinvent it. And I think we've done that today. We've turned, we've turned the Reba of old into revolutionary inspiration, resilient intelligence, and radical interaction of bricks and allies. So thank you. <laughs> when, when, when Charlie's quiet, he's actually writing a poem. <laughs> but thank you very much. And I hope to see you all soon.